guys, I was just looking at some of the stuff relating to traditional marriages, traditional women, etc., uh, relating to the MGTOW groups. Um, I want to talk about some of the stuff I've read because I, I want to put some of this stuff in perspective here because it's very easy for stuff to just lead in one direction. Um, I was reading on Reddit, for example, they're talking about um, women trying to entrap men into these marriages, marriage rates are reducing due to millennials, etc. The, the marriage rates, uh, sorry, the divorce rates are reducing and I assume the marriage rates will be, be uh, very similar because more people are cohabiting, which means they get to learn to hate each other before they get into a marriage. So th that's part and parcel of that. It's not just a case of millennials have decided they're not going to marry. Um, there's other dynamics at play as well. The other side of this being is that the concept of a traditional marriage is often used on the country and western scene, which I found very peculiar. And the reason I'm bringing this up is I think it's important for people to recognize there's more than one dynamic here. Um, when they were talking about country guys um, and their songs about the girlfriends left and did this, do that, blah, 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 blah. bear in mind country guys are famous for drug abuse women beating, uh, bar fighting, drunkenness. Um, they're everything that is designed to fail. You know, they, they, they relationship-wise, these are key factors in um, causing divorce. So there is no surprise that my girlfriend's left me because you're a methadone addict. There you go, there's a bit of reality for you. All the little bits get missing from there. Johnny Cash was a heavy drug drug user, etc. And it, it, you look at any of the stuff, the, is an autobiography with a lot of these um, guys. A lot of them have serious issues, or used to, because a lot of them are dead now. But uh, you cannot use that as your traditional marriage, <laughs> because it's not. Um, that, that is a destined to failure at day one. The viewpoint of many of these women is not religious either. They're not traditional women either. Um, I find their heads are very fake. Their religion view is very fake. It's daddy made me go to the church because I go to the, he goes to the church and I follow that and I've got to believe in Jesus because he believed in Jesus, all that sort of stuff. That is not them thinking. That is brainwashing. That is pre-programmed. Um, it doesn't mean that they are um, morally guided. Doesn't mean that they understand anything they're doing. Doesn't mean that they're gonna be um, a socially responsible person. At the end of the day, it's not done for the right reasons. It's done because they've been forced into it from childhood. It does not make them a religious person. There is a very, the reason I'm bringing this up is very, very different from somebody that actually believes in what they're doing. And they take into account their actions on others and their perceptions of how things um, can affect them and others. A lot of these people don't do that. A lot of their stuff is false persona. They will be getting punched in the face by the husband in the, the changing room. And then the next minute, they're just powdering up over the black eye and going on stage as if they're all happy and rosy. That's not a good example of traditional relationships. And the reason I bring this up is you cannot compare that to a lot of the relationships in the Philippines, which are very, very different. Um, you meet the, the right woman in the Philippines. The marriage is for life. And I know some guys will say, oh, well, they just want to take money off you. Just want to. It's tied in with being the breadwinner of the family. But it all depends on where you want to go in life. Do you want to have a lifelong partner? Do you want to be single? If you want to be single, it's fine. There's nobody stopping you being single. There's nobody stopping you um, doing what you want. But I also think that their, the perception is often too too strong from the MGTOW side on that all women are like this or that when I think it needs to be more broad because as I mentioned before, I think there's only two, two divorces and they haven't even happened yet in 
the people I've known for the last decade out of the Philippines that are married to foreign husbands. Because I know all the women as well as the, the men. I know the women more than the men because of the um, connection between people we know. And the difficult ones in there, I spotted at day one. And I think that's half the battle is that a lot of guys simply aren't recognizing they're with a bad partner at day one. I had a bad partner years ago. She was an absolute nightmare. Um, but it's only when you split up, and I want to stress it's not their mother or my daughter, um, but before that, she was a complete head case. And it's only when you step back and other people say, well, I didn't want to tell you, but your ex is like this or that. I'm like, why did he tell you? Oh, well, mates don't really want to get involved. But the point is, you recognize it afterwards. And the thing is, I understand that. I've had it in the Philippines where I've sat down with a guy and said to him, you do not want to marry this woman. Uh, I says, and I'll tell you my opinion. You know, if you want to marry her, fine. But I'm just telling you now, in my opinion, this is some serious problems. And then just listing things that I've seen, understand, etc. Because um, what you do find is people put it off for tomorrow. And I've seen that with a, a British guy did that. His wife was still messing around with her previous boyfriend and stuff. Other people had told him directly and he wouldn't accept it. And then he met the right woman and suddenly he did accept it and moved on. But yeah you just got to be aware of this stuff. It's, the, it's not so cut and dry. It's nice if everything was so cut and dry, but then it would also make life very boring. Um, but I find the women in the Philippines generally are, are solid women. And although people will say, oh, well, you know, the women are just after money, they'll leverage the kids, da, da, da. Most of the women I know wouldn't. And most of the women are in for the long haul. If, it, if it's a failure in the marriage, it's normally down to the guy. Um, because their, their viewpoint is to lock into the marriage long term. Their viewpoint is not short term. It's not visa chasing. It's not um, after you, a house or something. Those ones are the ones that I can spot a mile off. And I tell people about them. You can see it. And the whole point is, a lot of these guys, they arrive in a plane and they're like, Oh, she told me she loved me. She says, I'm like, she doesn't love you. You've only known each other 10 minutes. You've talked online for two months. That is not love. That is just a foundation for meeting up and trying to work out if you could get on. Never mind talk about marriage or anything else. But then when that marriage fails, those guys go back and say, Filipino's really bad. Don't marry a Filipino. Look in the mirror. The failure was the stuff I mentioned already when I said that girl is from a bad neighborhood. That girl has a boyfriend already. Um, that was, I don't even know where that guy is now, actually. There was a guy that actually um, got into a relationship with a girl and asked if I could look into her. Uh, within a day, we already found out she had three kids and a boyfriend that lived with her. But he still went and still got in a relationship with her. <laughs> so... The point being is, you already know that that relationship would be destined to fail. And a lot of this stuff is exactly that. It's destined to fail from day one. So using like the country and western argument, the guy, methadone addict, uh, drunk, violent, woman beater, why does he think his marriage failed? I have no idea. But also, like I said, from the woman's side, you often see these people and they're... They're, they're scary because their mind is completely brainwashed. You see, I, I mean, um, I, I mean, I haven't been to the Bible Belt. I'll be honest with you, but it's one of those areas I think I would struggle with to understand them. You know, at the end of the day, I cannot lock myself into that sort of hundred percent mindset. Where, yeah, Philippines, I see it sometimes, and a lot of it is dismissive. Uh, you know, for example, a child is sick and they go, oh, God's testing us or whatever. And I'm like, no, it's because you burn your waist next door. When you tip it over the fence, burn it once a week. You let the mosquitoes breed and they are now um, giving your kid an illness. God had nothing to do with this. It's your neglect 
to keep your area tidy. It's your neglect of responsibility. Do not say God is testing you or God pray or pray this, pray that. No, you created this. You're not, you're not taking the responsibility. Um, and that's what, one of the things I want to point out that I understand you get these types of people. I understand that completely. But they are not what I would call solely religious. They go to church because they're told to go to church. They selectively put church around their own life to make it good or bad and devoid themselves of any responsibility. The ones that matter and the ones that I recommend looking for are those with a bloody moral compass. The moral compass is part and parcel of that because if it's built on uh, traditional uh, values, then the whole point is they have learned some stuff from the church, but it's part and parcel of them. It is not all of them. So the point is they get that moral guidance that actually says what's right and wrong because a lot of them don't have it. My old boss didn't have it. When he used to put the phone down and say, God bless you, and that, he used to do that every single phone call. And he was part of the Christian business community and stuff. He got arrested for fraud. He was the most fraudulent person I knew. He's the most um, corrupt person I knew. But the whole point is, he used religion. He was not religious. And that's the point. A lot of these people are not religious. They do not believe in it. And so it's why I'm more in line with Protestant than Christian. Um, I'm not going to get into this debate too long, so don't bother with the comments on this because this will go on forever. Um, but the Christian way is your priest in a specific way, and it's often by the interpretation of the priest or whoever. I find with Protestants, because they their interpretation of the Bible is their perception, etc. They have had more opportunity to think about it, etc. Rather than being told it's X, Y, Z, if that makes sense. But like I said, I'm not going into this debate on it. But the, 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 the whole point is, my personal view is that's where I see the differences. Um, there's a lot of political stuff in there, and I'm not going to cover it too much because I dealt with Northern and Southern Ireland. I lived there, and I've also dealt with the uh, um, Glasgow issue of Rangers and Celtic, the Catholics and Protestants, and also the difference between the Royals, between the Edinburgh and Glasgow as well. So I'm not getting into any of these debates. <laughs> but I just want to put the, the point relating to traditional things. I'm seeing them very strong against... Um, women and I just wanted to say a lot of that stuff you've got to put the perception from all sides um, if you don't then you may be missing opportunities at the same time a lot of the time it's written by people that are still angry from old relationships and I get that as well you know at the end of the day um, like I said my frustration with my ex before was was how easily she would just change things to suit herself and you can't do anything about it you know you can you for me, when I was working in Norfolk, um, I was driving about 180 miles just to see my daughter on a weekend to find out, well, we're going out this weekend. And you're like, well, why didn't you say that before I traveled? Because that's spiked for you. Um, but as I said, I get it. But the point is, there is still good people out there. And I do respect people that want to go their own way and not get involved in the relationships. But I also respect the fact that there is some good people out there still. I mean, here in Spain, I know a few few women around here, the nice women. I mean, not my age group, but you know, from companion, com, companionship point of view, they'd be great for a lot of guys. You know, they're independent. They're not asking you to live with them and you don't need to live with them. Uh, yeah, they don't need to live with you, and you don't need to live with them. But they'll quietly, you know, be a bit of companionship as and when, you know, whether it's going out for dinner or whatever. You know, that's the point. Because I understand, you know, if I was in my 60s and single, I wouldn't be interested in another relationship. You know, at the end of the day, I'd rather travel and experience other stuff. Um, because at that point... If I was in that situation, 
my life would have already gone through all the relationship stuff and I've had good and bad relationships and I, I have no problem with being independent and on my own either um, but yeah if I was in my 60s I, I, I'd still be like pottering around I'd probably still go back to the Philippines I'd probably move over to the Philippines because um, by the time the kids will be older and doing their own thing as well so yeah I mean we may end up back in the Philippines because one of the things a lot of people say about the Philippines is they couldn't live there now and I would say yes but the Philippines is developing um, the next question is who will take on after Duterte I think his daughter may and this is one of the conversations I was having with several people when I was out in the Philippines and they're thinking the same she could easily drop into it and follow in his footsteps um, but we'll wait and see because the point is if you look at the amount of construction and development work going on since Duterte come in it's massive compared to what was going on before it's huge amounts of development um, I mean Cebu City for example there's construction everywhere they've got a new airport that's opening in less than a month they've got a lot of infrastructure stuff going in a new bridge going up and stuff like that they are developing the nation um, so from my point of view I, I can get that some people may think that it's not ideal right now but I also think give it another five years and a good bit of continuous leadership Philippines is going to look a lot better in a, in a lot better shape, especially environmentally. Something's been ignored since probably the 70s. Um, so I'm looking forward to those changes. Thanks for watching.